All right, this is uh, Zoe's Roadmap to Success video. And I wanted to remind the guardians of a couple of things that we went over today in the session. And the first one being different, having some rules in place to help her kind of take away some of the anxiety. So she starts to look to you guys as leaders and take the follower position. Remember, that's going to be one of the main ways to help reduce some of her anxiety, nervous energy is just by kind of demoting her. So she doesn't have as much responsibility or she doesn't take on as much responsibility and let her just kind of relax and just be a good dog. Um, so the first rule is uh, no furniture for a minimum of 30 days or until the behaviors that you were concerned about that brought us here um, have been resolved. And the next one, is, and then it's furniture with permission only. So then you get to the point where you ask her to sit and then you can invite her on the furniture. That also changes the dynamics because she's looking to direction and that will help her still see herself on the furniture as a member of the family, but not just getting to have that privilege. And it'll be great for when, you know, nieces and nephews come over because she won't be, you know, trying to guard the couch or anything like that. Uh, another rule is have her sit before going through main threshold. So going from outside to inside, going outside to go for a walk, going through that, um, the gate from the living room into the foyer and all those different type of areas, just ask her to sit first. Um, and then also remember not to, if she's awake and standing up, to not walk around the dog. So if you're walking into the kitchen and she's standing right in your way, just keep walking in the most direct pathway that you usually would and have her move out of the way so she knows that she should be kind of um, moving away to pressure from you guys as the leaders. Again, we're not trying to push her around, but as you walk, she should feel inclined to kind of step away. Uh, keep petting with a purpose. So use that technique. Remember to have her sit before you start petting her. Once you do start petting her, you can pet her for however long you want to. She can stand up, flop over, get belly rubs. It's really just her way to initiate petting. So that's, you know, um, her way of saying please. So she doesn't have to stay sitting like a statue forever. She can come up on the furniture after 30 days or get belly rubs, whatever you want. Um, it doesn't matter to me. You just want it to start off by her sitting and being a good girl. The other thing is to remember to use the escalating consequences to disagree with unwanted behavior. So if she's doing something like getting up on the furniture when she's not supposed to, you can use the escalating consequences to disagree with her. However, if she's doing something like demand barking at you and trying to get your attention by bonking you like in the knee with her nose or pawing at you or anything like that where she's demanding your attention, that's when you ignore that behavior. Remember that even eye contact alone can keep her trying and to get your attention more. So if she is barking at you, fully ignore her, meaning don't look at her or anything like that and keep up with that until she stops. And then you don't wanna reward her right afterward. Just go back to normal kind of daily behavior, act like everything's normal. So that's the best way to get her to stop doing demand barking and all that type of stuff. Um, and then we did a couple of exercises. One was to help that dynamic shift in the home, and that was the leadership exercise. Try to practice that once a day for the next 30 days. Remember, I like to try to attach um, training around the times that you're gonna be working with the dog already. So letting her inside or outside, feeding her, grab a couple treats, do the leadership exercise or the focus exercise. Another thing you should do for the next 30 days. Remember that's the one where you put the treats on your hand, uh, on your knees like this and wait for her to look up to you. Um, with the focus exercise, try to work up to 30 seconds. This is a great time to use my five for five rule. Do the same duration five times in a row over five different training periods. So for the focus exercise, grab five treats do the same duration, even if it's one second, over five times of training, and then move up to maybe three seconds, five seconds, then 10 seconds, usually goes to 15, 15 to 20, then 20, you can generally jump up, up to 30. Um, if you want, you can use this as a great way to help her cancel out other distractors. So if you get up to 30 seconds in the home, you can practice outside, drop your expectations down, <laughs> so you don't go all the way up to 30 seconds, but maybe up to 10. And then if, say, a squirrel's going by on a walk, you can grab a treat out of your pocket, say focus, and get her to look up and maintain eye contact so she's not overly focusing on the squirrel or anything else. It's a great way to get her attention on you, cancel out other things. You can also work on the claiming the door exercise. Remember, that's when you're keeping her behind that barrier. So, um, or 
out of the foyer area while you're opening the door so she knows that you're in control of that area you're deciding who's coming in and who's coming out so try to practice that a couple times a week so she has practice with people coming to the door or at least hearing the doorbell and you acting like someone's at the door so she'll be really good when guests do arrive remember in the beginning she might still bark but that should subside over time um, let's see what other exercises and then the structured walk um, start off with smaller increments if you can for walks because she'll be more successful and then you can work up to longer and longer walks and as she gains the privilege of not pulling on the leash you can give her more slack so she can start to smell around and do other things like that um, and then the other tip that I had for you guys with the um, helping her integrate with the kids better is to start training her to sit and catch different treats you can use Cheerios and uh, carrots and apple pieces things like that and teach her to catch treats so the kids can start tossing treats to her I like having her learn to sit and stay so she doesn't jump forward and try to take anything out of their hands but it also helps build trust between little kids and a dog because they don't even have to pet her and it's a game they'll start having fun with her because they'll think oh this is fun let me toss it over here and over here and she can kind of have fun with them too and it just builds up a really positive association between little kids and dogs because it's a fun thing for both sides all right and then lastly I want to remind you that everything you do trains your dog only sometimes you mean it